Hi there, I'm Sandra from Creating Spain and today I wanted to show you this stencil that I've designed. Now I'm just calling this one a floral stencil, it's no particular type of flower, but it's very very pretty and I want to show you a couple of ways that it can be used. So I've put on some temporary spray adhesive on the back of it because that is by far the easiest way of making sure that something stays put and that things don't go underneath it. I have some kitchen roll here by my side. I have a scraper, I have a spatula in case I want that. And what I also need are some inks. First of all, I am going to use one of these brushes to apply some color. Now, I know I have leaves in here, but I'm not making them green. It's just a pattern. I will put whatever colours I feel like. Actually, I didn't think I used rhubarb stalk, but I'll put whatever colours I feel like over this. It's just going to be randomly coloured in. It's not, you know, this flower is that colour, this flower is that colour. No, no I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm going to wipe off the stencil. There is a little bit there which is part of a leaf which is probably not going to come out because yeah, I've just wiped it in the wrong direction but it's not that much of a problem. There we go. And I'm going to leave that there for the moment. Now I am going to add some texture paste. This happens to be Liquitex Gloss Gel. I'm not going to want to put this back in the pot because it could well take some of the colour. So I do need to make sure that I don't use too much because I don't want to waste it, obviously. If I can't put it in the pot when I finish, then I really don't want to put more on than I have to to get the coverage. And I think, coverage-wise, that's probably about done. It dries quite fast usually, and you really don't want it drying on your stencil. I'm going to pick this up and put it on a piece of paper because I still haven't finished. I have some white, sort of semi-transparent glitter, and I'm just going to put a whole load of that over this. And now I just have to leave that to dry. Now, I have used the same version of the design to cut out as a background panel. And this is how it's turned out. So I have a white base card. I put on a dove grey front panel. And then I put on this cutout exactly the same as it is with the stencil. There's no difference. What I did though was I put some foam tape underneath this cutout. I cut out very tiny pieces of foam tape and put it underneath. So this is actually not stuck directly. You can see that there is some depth there. It's not stuck directly onto the card. And because of that, you get this extra nice dimensional feel to it. It just, it just does something for it. And then all I did was I put this With Love Sentiment on, which was done on my silver bullet. And I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's actually done with a silver Signo pen on black cardstock. And I raised that up on a foam pad as well. But if you have a cutting machine, be it a brother scan and cut, a silhouette cameo, whatever, then one of the things they are really, really good at is making stencils. Now I have noticed that one of the ideas for stencils recently is stencils that are offset. So you might have a row of stars or a row of dots or a row of, I don't know, snowflakes or something or other, flowers, and you have them in rows. And you do those in one colour and then you put it down and you do a row in another colour. And those are really, really easy to design yourself because what you do is so you have one row of a design 
and then you repeat it. Now if you've got shortcuts a lot, it's so simple, you just tell it how many repeats you want and how far apart you want it to be, and it's, it's a complete doddle being able to do that. But when you've done that, you take the alternate lines and you offset them to the left or the right, one way or the other, so that you have a variation in the lineup. And it's really, really simple to do. But when you cut it out, what you do is you fully cut out the first line, the third line, the fifth line, you get it, alternate lines. The lines in between with your design, all you do is you set your blade or your scoring tool, whatever, to a lighter pressure so that you can see the design, but it's not actually physically cut out. And then when you do your stenciling, you do your first lot over the holes as you would normally, and you use the second row to line it up with the first row and then do your offset rows and that way you won't be doing one row, two row, three row, four row, five row with them all in a, a line and, and looking very regimented. So that is really easy to do. Um, for anyone who isn't really familiar with using their software, I suggest just, just get to learn it because most of it is pretty user friendly. It isn't difficult once you actually get into it and it opens up so many more possibilities for your designing. It's just incredible. Um, if you're wondering how I designed this particular one, I did this one on my iPad in Concepts. And I literally just drew the lines, made my flowers, copied, pasted them, dotted them around, you know, wherever I wanted them to be. Drew a few different types of leaf again, copy, paste, move them around. And then I just drew little dots in between whilst it's very, very easy to do. And Concepts has a nice feature these days, which works really, really well, that if you draw a line and it's almost a shape, it'll join it up for you if you want it to. You just have to alter the settings in the app to do that, and it's brilliant. And you can export it directly as an SVG, so you don't have to do any tracing or anything if you do that kind of design. This is the one that I did with the inks, and then put the white glitter over the top, and I think it does look really rather nice. I did put foam underneath the front panel here to give it a little bit of extra heft, because I think sometimes when you're using uh, paste and things, it can be very tempting for the paper to bend and warp. And having the foam layer underneath does actually help that. Now, if you find you've got a little glitter that's where it shouldn't be, you can go over it with a lint roller and that will help to pick up some of the loose bits. It looks pretty good. And the last one that I did is this one. Now, I've got a piece of gold foil card. I had already embossed it with some shelf liner so that it has a little pattern in it. But I then cut out this design with black paper and just put that on the top and I think that comes out pretty well. I think I would probably prefer it with a foam layer on it as well. Maybe just raising this layer up like I did with the first one because I prefer that dimensional look. But if you have to send a very flat card, this is certainly rather pretty. Now I haven't added a sentiment because I could decide that I want my card to go up this way. There's no reason why it shouldn't. And again, I don't know what I'm going to be sending it for. So it could be a sympathy card, it could be a birthday card, it could be a hello card, it could be anything. And again, with this one, I haven't bothered putting a sentiment on, but that's one of the easiest things to do. I personally like this one the best. That's just my complete favorite. It's very, very simple in the color scheme very clean, very clear, very classic looking. 
and I just like the dimension which is added by raising up this panel. So there we go, I will link the file as normal below, hope you have fun with it, and by all means experiment, take it to pieces and do other things with it. Thanks for watching, take care.